Welcome, cellist. Let's talk about bow path, or staying perpendicular to the string. All right, when we're talking about bow path and contact point and all of that, we're talking about, you know, this staying in the optimal place, depending on the dynamic or the tone color that we're after here between the fingerboard and the bridge, and also uh, using the bow efficiently, all right, and staying perpendicular to the string so that we can, you know, do string crossings and play whatever dynamic we're after with a good tone and not having the bow skid around because, you know, when the bow's at an angle, of course, that's an extreme angle. It's not going to catch the string. You know, it only catches the string. You know, it catches the string the most, all right, when it's perpendicular, okay? So a great way to practice that is in the mirror. And right now I have the, uh, the camera here as my mirror, the phone screen. So if you have a device that you can put, if you don't have a mirror and you have a device you can put on a tripod like this or something, this is a great way right, to practice to create a mirror situation. I practice in front of a mirror for many hours, all right, for straight bow. Well, a couple of things I'm gonna point out here, and the reason I'm over here on one side of the screen is so that you can see my right hand. This is very important. The tip goes off the screen, it doesn't matter. And this is the number one reason that people fail to have a straight bow is that this doesn't flex, okay? So when you're coming into the frog, see how much my wrist has to flex? And this is the same for violin, for viola, for bass. As I come into the frog here, my wrist has to flex. And then as I go out to stay straight, it has to flex the other way. You need to look in the mirror here, in the reflection, and what you're doing is you're memorizing what this feels like, okay? This is the mechanism that is pulling and pushing the bow. So you're memorizing how much this is flexing and also the relationship of it to your uh, body, all right? Let's talk about orbit. This is a great, fun way to understand uh, the orbit here on the cello. So just take a hula hoop and put it around you, okay? So that you can feel your hand going around this way, okay? All right? Because this is what happens on the cello. Your hand has to go up and out and over, okay, as we come to the frog here. Or right? playing, say, you know, lower half of the bow, all right? Up and out. Because we want this natural tendency to go up and down floor to ceiling, okay? Or, you know, like this, out and in. And to keep a straight bow, it's a combination of the two. Now, because you don't always have a phone screen or a hula hoop laying around that you can access quickly or a mirror uh, to see if your bow is traveling straight, traveling perpendicular to the string, uh, you're going to have to use what you have at your disposal there uh, sitting in the ensemble uh, just with your cello and bow. And that is looking simply from the bridge to the fingerboard. You know, if my bow is consistently and always playing in the same contact point, well, then it's traveling straight. So I'm looking here from G, to G to D to A. Is my bow as close as I can gauge traveling in the same spot? And if I'm really being uh, super duper picky about that, then I'm going to travel with a straight bow, okay? And also remembering to flex your wrist, okay? Remember, this is key component, all right, to keeping a straight bow on any instrument, any bowed string instrument. Right. And the other critical factor here with cello is that you're not going straight up and down, floor to ceiling, okay, or wall to wall. That as you go, your C string is the easiest, all right? When I'm on the C string, all right, my hand is close to my body, it's close to me. But when I'm on the A string, because of the way I'm moving, all right, my hand is a little farther away, because as I go, I move up and out. So if you remember to do that, up and out and back and in, and up and out and back and in, and flex your wrist, all right, and look at your contact point, all right, you can learn. how to consistently bow with a straight bow. Hope that helps, and uh, we'll see you next time.